Yes. Okay. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. So today I'm going to be talk talking about artificial intelligence. And this has almost become like a buzzword in this day and age where it's having so many applications and so many people are studying this new field. So first off, I'm going to start off by defining artificial intelligence and how, it, how it's different from giving um, a robot a set of tasks to do. Um, basically, you're, you're building a brain for a robot rather than um, telling it move forward, turn right. You're saying, hey, react in this way to its environment, basically. So it's, um, it's essentially how you're going to create a robot that's going to react to its environment um, and try to most accurately um, achieve its goal. So robots. Robots in themselves are just a vehicle for artificial intelligence. So here we have a robot. Um, they're all over in movies. Um, and they're, they're basically just using the, the code you give them. So how I got started. So um, when, I was, when I was younger, I used to always, uh, used to always watch TV. And um, I remember I never, I never liked watching the advertisements. And there was always this one ad about the Roomba robot, which was the robot that would go around and clean your house. And I thought it was so cool. And I thought that you know, um, a massive team must have worked on building something like this. And no student could ever you know, achieve something similar. And then a few years later, I started thinking about how it works and doing some research and learning that it uses artificial intelligence and um, the language um, to, to build robots with. It's usually Python. So I decided to go with Python. And I bought this small robot right here, which I'm going to explain a little bit about the robot. It has two sensors, um, a proximity sensors uh, on the left and right to, to know how far something is, in which it shines a laser and it bounces off an object. And the thing in the middle receives it. And based off of the length of the wave, it can basically determine the distance an object is. And then there's two other sensors, which are floor sensors, to know um, if it's basically touching the floor and what color it's touching. And then there's a gyroscope to know relative position. OK, so the first issue I ran into when I was building this robot was um, I, I basically wanted to create something similar to the Roomba, kind of playing with the idea of artificial intelligence and a robot that can kind of um, work with its environment. So the first thing I was wondering about a Roomba is when you get stuck in a corner, how does it, how, how does it know how to escape? Because um, tradi a traditional approach would be say, hey, if, the left if, the, if there's something closer to the left than the right, then you turn right. But what would happen in a corner is it would just keep going back and forth because one would get great, one sensor would sense something closer, and then the other. So you need to create something um, basically called a thread. And a thread is basically you're going to create an array. So you're basically going to start storing your input for um, distance of your centers and start constantly storing them inside of a thread. So um, basically, in, in a few seconds, um, the robot's constantly taking in data and storing um, the, the values that the, centers, that the sensors give. And then this event watcher, which is all this stuff right here, this is a state machine, which categorizes um, the data which is inputted. So if it categorizes, uh, hey, the left center is greater than the right, then it's going to call, then it's going to be saved as an obstacle left. So it knows that there's an obstacle left. And it'll save, and it'll keep saving this. And basically, um, from this, um, you'll basically be able to, um, when, you run, when you run into a corner, it rather than, um, It'll, compl it'll complete the action until there's no obstacle left. So it'll just turn, 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 and then um, until something is free, allowing it to escape corners. And imagine if you were to surround, uh, surround a robot um, in a field and it had no escape possible. It would keep turning and keep turning because there's no escape possible. And this has utilities in things like maze. What if you wanted to create a robot which would basically solve a maze? And you would just drop in the maze. You, you, there's a start point and there's an end point, and it has to get there. Okay. And it's very similar to this concept. The only thing different is there's fixed movement, because a maze is, uh, you know, it's a grid. So you're not going to be moving as much. It's not going to be continuous motion. It's going to be more like 90 degree motion, one direction, 90 degree motion, another, and then turning. And then the other part is exploration of paths. If you have a robot like this and you put it in a maze, it's going to keep going through the same paths. Maybe if you leave it for long enough, it'll end up finding the right path. But um, what you want to do is you want to actually um, have the robot start saving paths, Sa start, save where it starts, save where it ends. Hey, say, hey, I've already went down this route. Why am I going to go down the route again? And then based off of that, you know, c retracing its steps and all of that, and storage of um, paths that it's already covered. So the next part was creating a virtual reality. Because although this is really cool, 
Um, a useful thing would be um, you know, having a way of uh, displaying all of this, because there's a lot going on in the robot, but you, know, you can't really see everything that's going on in the robot. So basically, you have sensors, and you have you know, like a GUI, which is basically just interface, and you have a robot on it. You, know, you just make the rectangle, whatever, and then you have these lines. So now you have a virtual reality. So now you have the actual reality, and then you know, the reality in your computer. And the two don't always match, because you know, there's, there's a force of friction in and in of itself, where basically if a robot starts moving and um, it didn't move as much on the screen as in there, how does it then you know, go back and match? And that's comparison and sensors. It's always comparing. There's a thread going on where it's basically always comparing its position and um, reevaluating where the robot is. And um, so the next thing was how do you get from point A to point B with a robot? So imagine if you have an obstacle course and you want to get from one part to another part with a robot and there's obstacles in the way. And so here in this diagram, we have 4, 0 is the starting point, and 2, 0 is the goal point. And I just set them re uh, really easily like that, and then I create a graph. And this is um, data structures. Um, it's basically just um, a bunch of nodes, which are just like positions for the robot, different positions it could be in. And it's basically just populating it. So now you have a bunch of different squares, and I, and I said wherever there are obstacles. So the robot's going to start in 4, 0. And how does it figure out, how do I get to 2, 2? How do I get there? And this goes, in, this goes into something called, uh, that I use called BFS, which is breadth first search, which is um, a way of looking at data structures and finding the shortest path to something. So um, uh, this is a common problem. I bet most of you have seen it, where you have a start point and an end point. And how do you get to the end point? And, um, for, for many people, you're going to have to do math, you're going to have to start counting. But if I put this into a, um, a program which looks into breath, which basically finds the shortest path, it'll do it really easily. It'll, uh, in a few seconds, it'll find the answer. So how do I get in this diagram from A to J? Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to find all the different solutions, and then it's going to uh, choose the one with the shortest. So the next thing is a queue of movement, because once you have the start point and the end point, you need to turn the, dif you need to turn the different path into a movement. So basically, here I have a queue. And um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but basically, you can also have the interface updating. So as you move from location to location, your interface um, changes as well. And one thing I was wondering is the environment, the real world isn't as perfect as this virtual reality that I was creating. So what if there's an obstacle? Okay, Let's say we start on 0, 0, and our goal is to get to 3, 3. And we go to 0, 1. We go from, we go from here to here, to here. And then we find that there's an obstacle in 1, 2. Okay? It's, the sensors are always uh, detecting. And they see there's, a sen there's an obstacle. Hey, how do we get there now? So it restarts the code and says, hey, I'm going to add to the list of obstacles and create a new path. So now I can get to my new desired location, even if obstacles, a new obstacle has been created. So now it's more like, more like an actual robot where, um, where, it can, um, where it can take in its environment and the end product ended up being something um, where, where the robot basically, it, it wasn't quite like a Roomba, because a Roomba is, is it's way more complicated, where basically um, it's, ca it's capturing way more information. It's um, moving around way more. And in mine, it's, it's operating in a grid, if you saw. Um, and, and that's kind of like the limitations of the robot in itself. Um, but I was pretty proud of what I'd done. And, um, one of the important things to, uh, to mention is, um, is my, my goal was to utilize AI, which I saw in the Roomba. And what I ended up is you know, learning a lot about artificial intelligence and its applications, and, and, that, and that it's not something that you, know, you only see companies doing, it, but that individuals can do as well. Thank you.